Hey, welcome back once again, all you Sec Plus preppers. My name is Colin Weaver. These are the Security Plus questions of the day from IT Dojo. And that's it. I ask you two questions every single day to help you get prepped for your Security Plus exam. Um, I've taken a hiatus uh, for some work reasons, and I'm kind of all messed up on my mojo. But anyhow, never mind all that. Let's ask some questions. All right. Given this enormous list, which of them are examples of whitelisting? Click on pause. Think about it. Pick three. Let me know. First choice on the list says allowing Netflix access when all other uh, video websites are blocked by the firewall. So you're blocking, you know, Hulu and YouTube and things like that. So, but Netflix is allowed. That's absolutely whitelisting when you go in and do that. So you go and use an application layer firewall, do content filtering on it, go in and say, I don't want to allow sites that do you know, streaming media, streaming video, and stuff like that. But this one over here is okay. Netflix is okay. That's whitelisting. Next answer choice says that you're going to allow wireless and access by defining a list of allowed IP addresses. While that may seem compelling, it is not the right answer. And the reason it's not the right answer is, is because we don't control access to wireless LANs by IP address. At most, and don't even get me started on it because I don't want to talk about how terrible an idea it is, Controlling access to wireless LANs can be done with MAC addresses, but not with IP addresses. Um, even though controlling access by MAC addresses is not part of the standard, it's not a great idea, uh, it still exists. And you can do it, and it will keep the moms and dads of the world off, one of the, off people's networks. But uh, anybody who's a slightly motivated attacker is going to make short work of something like a MAC filter. So don't use that to try and control your wireless LAN. But anyway, on to more answer choices. The third answer choice says, by configuring a list of applications that are not allowed to run on a system. No, that's blacklisting. We're looking for whitelisting examples. Saying what's not allowed is blacklisting. Saying what is allowed would be whitelisting. And that's not what this answer choice says. All right, how about denying a subject line or denying an email message that has a subject line with offensive language from a known good sender? Uh, no, you're denying, so you're not whitelisting anything. So. That's not the right answer either. And the last answer, which may seem bizarre to some people, is allowing a user to access a system by, a system by providing them with a valid username and password. Very much. You're whitelisting. Who's allowed to log into your computer by default? Nobody. Until you do what? Create a username and password, thereby putting them on the whitelist. So absolutely, usernames and passwords are a form of whitelisting because the behavior of pretty much every modern operating system is that nobody's allowed access unless they are explicitly allowed access. And uh, that is very much a, a definition of how whitelisting works. Okay, here comes question number two. You've got a system that implements application whitelisting by using cryptographic checks. A program that had been working previously has been updated and now suddenly doesn't work anymore. Given these answer choices, which of them is likely to be the reason why? Go ahead and click on pause if you need to, read those answer choices, and then click play, and we can break each answer choice down. First answer choice, no. Uh, the file system path has changed, not our problem. Second answer choice, the file size has changed, also not our problem. Third answer choice, the name on the file has changed, not our problem. So one, two, and three, not going to be the right answers. The next answer, because we are doing cryptographic checksums, is likely to be the best answer in this scenario which is that the hashes no longer match. In essence, the executable has been replaced. So when we go to hash it to validate its integrity, the system says, eh, not the right file. So therefore, uh, not going to let this guy run. So we would need to update the cryptographic hashes of this file. For all the system can tell, this is a, now a malicious file that has replaced the known good, uh, not something that's just been updated. The system can't tell the difference. To him, it's just not the same, so therefore it can't run. Then the last answer choice, the digital signature is from a trusted signer. Uh, no, that wouldn't be a problem. That would actually be a good thing. Uh, if, the, if the signing authority for the certificate that's doing this hashing is actually from a trusted authority, that's positive. So that's not our problem here either. So only one right answer, and that is that the hashes no longer match. Okay, two quick questions down. Appreciate you being here. I'm glad to be back. I'll be back tomorrow with two more questions. I'll see you then. Peace.
Thank <laughs> you.